Since we spent the last couple of weeks talking about the prototype chain, it's definitely worth touching on something called property enumerability at the same time. This is a complex topic, but not one that I want to span out over multiple tutorials, so we're only going to touch on certain aspects of it. For example, I'm not going to talk about symbols at all, because I don't think there's something that's used by most day-to-day -day JavaScript developers. Am I wrong? Do you use symbols all the time? Reply to this video and let me know. So let's talk first about for in. This is a built-in JavaScript approach to looping through object properties. We'll start by creating a constructor and then instantiating a new object, like we talked about last week. And let's write a simple for in loop that iterates over the object and displays each property name and the associated value, like this. Save that and run it. And we have to remember to put blonde in as a string, not a value. There we go. Now let's add a prototype method and rerun our loop with this code. I'm just going to paste this since it's the same thing. So that's a problem. You may note that it's displaying our prototype method. That's not what we want, and it seems a little confusing. If it's displaying that prototype method, why isn't it displaying native ones like has own property? The answer is because those methods have their enumerability flag set to false. New methods that we create do not default to false, at least not when created by direct assignment like we just did here. Fortunately, we can change that after the fact using object.define property and then running our loop again. Try this code. And once again, pasting our for loop. Save. Refresh. Once again, our shout name function has disappeared. That's what we want, since we don't really want to be showing prototype methods. But can we still use it? You bet. Check it out. That'll blast us with Bob Parr in all caps. Object.define property also works just fine for non-prototype methods that you'd prefer not be enumerable. In fact, you can use it to define a new method entirely. You don't have to define the method first and then set its enumerability flag. And it'll default to false without you even having to tell it to. Watch. And once again, copy and paste, save, refresh. As you can see, we're listing out after our shout. We're still not seeing either of the two methods, the prototype or the new one we just defined. But of course, we can still use the list powers method, like this. And there you see it, power one strength, power two durability. As you can see, property enumerability is really useful in keeping your objects clean. It allows you to iterate over stored data while ignoring any methods you don't want the iterator looking at. One quick thing to note, by default, object.define property also sets a property's writable flag to false, which means you can't overwrite the method or value, it doesn't have to be a function, using an assignment operator. That is to say, this code isn't going to work. Watch. This is still going to be a function. If you're creating non-enumerable properties that you're going to want to reassign later, which is not something I prefer, but there are probably valid reasons for it here and there, you'll need to expressly set the writable flag to true. That's it for this week. See you next time.